Go ahead. The best view we got was through the uh, binoculars, and um, the best way I can describe it is uh, there's some kind of um, reflective uh, cloth or um, with uh, some, a metallic-looking type of cloth uh, of a structure that's uh, definitely not rigid or uh, it's not a, um, a you know solid metal structure. It started over uh, window eight. Uh, then quickly uh, moved towards the nose of the orbiter, um, and we tracked it through windows uh, one, two, three, four, and uh, now it's out. What about window five? It's moving away. For thousands of years, humans have gazed upon the heavens, pondering primordial questions. What is the nature of life? How did life begin? Is there life on other planets? Are we alone? On Earth, we know life is resilient and adaptive and can thrive in almost any environment, no matter how boiling hot, frigid, radioactive, and poisonous to life. Living creatures have been found at the bottom of the ocean, under incredible atmospheric pressures, in boiling water spewed by undersea volcanoes, in the frigid Antarctic, miles beneath the frozen ice, in radioactive waste, and nearly 50 miles above the Earth, in the stratosphere, in suborbital space. And almost a dozen experiments have proved that single-celled creatures can survive a journey through space, as if they are pre-adapted to these conditions, as if through natural selection their ancient ancestors journeyed here from the stars. Since living creatures have been found in almost every conceivable environment on Earth, then why couldn't life not just survive, but thrive in outer space? Perhaps because the so-called experts have told us it's impossible, humans have failed to recognize evidence of extraterrestrial extremophiles, of biological UFOs, even when the evidence has been filmed by NASA and is right before our eyes. Looks like you got an object right in front of you, Mark. Can you look out there? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Never mind. Discovery, we're sending you an order to stay vector. That's uh, looking out in front of the orbiter. Okay, we're seeing three or four objects. Uh, can, you, can you confirm that it's just the one that's actually moving? The other ones are just reflect, reflections? No, there are, uh, there are three objects. The one you see, you see two rings right there. They're the ones we kind of had the late tally-ho on. Uh, the one uh, down the bottom, that was the one we initially saw. Some claim these biological UFOs are in crystals of ice, when in fact ice crystals, including those formed in the sub-zero temperatures typical of space, do not take this shape or form, or grow to be what may be miles in size. Others dismiss these objects as debris, space junk, and most certainly much of it is. But much of it is not, and there is no explanation for why basically identical forms, sometimes numbering in the hundreds and thousands, have been observed by a variety of space shuttle missions. And it is impossible to believe that space junk would show purposeful behavior, including sudden shifts in speed and direction of movement. Astronauts have described these objects as definitely not rigid. Not like solid metal objects, but flexible, plasma-like, having paper-thin membranes. And these biological UFOs are frequently translucent and have a nucleus at their center, typical of trillions of earthly life forms and single-celled creatures. In fact, 
although gigantic in size, many are similar in shape and behavior to algae, cyanobacteria, and a species known as Eurdurina elegans. The biological morphology and behavior of these biological UFOs is typified by this sequence where multiple biological UFOs swarm toward and congregate around a satellite released into orbit by NASA. Bravo, we had the camera, Bravo, constantly on the tether. Unfortunately, we don't see the tip of the boom, but uh, in a few seconds, you'll see the tether break. And this one, of course, was uh, not attended. It just recorded. It could not be bumped either, so it uh, will record steadily the whole uh, break and uh, coil back to the tether. Copy, Claude. Again, this is a view of the satellite. Well, if it had to break, it did it in the right place. Sure. Columbia and the satellite now 77 nautical miles apart. Again, that call reporting that uh, the crew can see the tether and uh, see the satellite. To, that it's beautiful. This view uh, showing uh, the satellite. Again, uh, just moving into sunrise. 81 nautical miles now from Columbia. Franklin, uh, we see a long line, a couple of star-like things, and a lot of things swimming in the foreground. Can you describe what you're seeing? Well, the long line is, uh, is a tether, um, and uh, there's a little bit of debris that uh, kind of flies with us, and uh, it's uh, illuminated by the sun at such low angles. So this is a lot of stray light and it's getting washed out uh, quickly, but uh, Claude is trying to do a, a quick, uh, good job here adjusting the cameras. Copy that. You know that description by the crew, this is uh, the tether in the satellite, uh, the satellite with 12, approximately 12 miles of tether still attached to it. Columbia and the satellite are now just passing over the west coast of uh, northern Africa. The two spacecraft are now 90 nautical miles apart. The controllers for the satellite uh, did have communications uh, with it uh, during the close pass uh, between Columbia and the satellite. Columbia Houston, that's a much better view, uh, a lot more contrast visible. And how wide uh, does that tether appear to be? We, we see, it seems to resemble a, a much wider strand than we'd expect. Can you describe which way the, uh, the satellite is visible on that uh, strand? Satellite uh, now 100 nautical miles. 
Charlie, completely unzoomed, and uh, you see the full extent of the tether. And I try to adjust the focus, but I can't get better than that. Okay, Claude. Thank you. I'm going to zoom in now. In the last 30 years, life has been discovered in every conceivable place on Earth, in every conceivable environment, even though the so-called experts claimed it was impossible. What we have presented here, from film footage created by NASA, is evidence that life is not confined to Earth, but may well swim the seas of space, perhaps feeding on living planets and traveling among the stars.